special welcome to Venerable Kimpo Kao Sang Jiaozhen, who is the abbot of His Holiness Sakya Treason's Temple Seat of the United States. He's an important teacher and translator of the Buddha Dharma here, and has played an important role in helping to bring the Dharma to North America. He'll be presiding over the sutra meeting tonight, which includes some of the sutras which he translated for the 84,000. Welcome to all the honored guests and everyone else. Very glad you could come out tonight on this very beautiful evening. My name is Chudra Makunga Chudra, and as I've been asked to make a few remarks as a member of the 84,000 Project Working Committee. I'd like to thank you all for coming to, to, to tonight's historic event. This, as you know, is the very first public resounding of the sutras in English, which has arisen from the 84,000 Project's effort to translate the entire Tibetan canon <coughs> into English. May there be many, many more such resoundings. I'd like to extend a special appreciation to tonight's event partners, the event patrons, Wei Chi and an anonymous foundation, the event's co-sponsors, the International Network of Engaged Buddhists, Rigpa, Washington, D.C., and Sakya Putsongli. Also, very special thanks to Deborah McLaughlin, who's the North American Fundraising Director, who's worked very hard to plan, organize, and accomplish tonight's event. We dedicate tonight's sutra reading to the late, great Western Buddhist scholar and Bodhisattva, E. Jean Smith. As many of you know, he made it his life's work to find, collect, study, catalog, and digitize every Tibetan Buddhist manuscript that he could find. Beginning in the 1960s until his lamented passing a few years ago, or last year actually, he labored for a half a century, faithfully carrying out the instructions of his teacher, Dejan Rinpoche to find and save the Tibetan Buddhist texts. At a critical moment, when the political changes in Tibet had scattered and destroyed this thousand-year-old piece of human heritage, Jean Smith searched for the texts, and page by page, text by text, he found them, saved them, and shared them with the world. Through his wise and compassionate efforts, most of what's happening here tonight has been impossible. The 84,000 Project is an effort to translate the entire Buddhist canon into the world's major modern languages, starting with English, and then to make the translations freely available to everyone on the internet and other platforms yet to be invented in the future. This is a big project, and it's very, very important. It's a big project because, as the name 84,000 implies, the Buddha spoke 84,000 articles of Dharma. These 84,000 teachings are known as the Kanjur, and they comprise some 70,000 pages. It's not one single handy book like some religions. In fact, it's an entire bookcase full of teachings spoken by the the Tibetan canon also includes another section known as the Tenjur, which are the commentaries on those 70,000 pages of the Buddhist teaching. The commentaries were written by great Indian masters, such as Nagarjuna, Chandrakirti, and others. Together, the Kanjur and the Tenjur sections comprise the canon, which is over 230,000 pages of Tibetan manuscripts. Translated. That is many bookcases full of texts. The 84,000 Project estimates that translating all of this into English will take about a hundred years of sustained human effort. It will take several generations of translators, obviously. But it is not an impossible task. Already in the history of the world, 
Several great civilizations have done it. The Chinese did it. Of course, the Tibetans did it. For the Tibetans, it took several hundred years. It took the Chinese about the same amount of time. Also, the Mongolians, the Koreans, and a handful of other countries cared enough about the teachings to translate the entire Buddhist canon. The 84,000 project expects that this time it won't take several hundred years, it will only take a hundred years. Thanks to technology, these days we don't have to walk to India to get the texts. Due to Gene Smith, they're right at our fingertips online. Also, we don't have to grind the ink to write each word with the pen. We can type it quickly. And in addition, we don't have to carve the wood blocks to print the sutras. So we can pick up time, but it's still a big project. So now, in our time, in our language, this great human effort of undertaking the translation of the entire Buddhist canon has started again. This gathering is historic because it's the first public reading anywhere in the world of the fruits of the 84,000 Project's translation effort into English. All of us here tonight have very good karma to participate in this. And we shall pray that we can participate again and again in many future lives. As I mentioned, translating the Buddhist canon from Tibetan into English is an extremely important project, not just a big one. For this reason, the project has been blessed and encouraged by the heads of all four orders of Tibetan Buddhism. One of the reasons why, in their wisdom, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, His Holiness the Karmapa, His Holiness the Psychiatrist, and, and um, the head of the Nyingma orders have blessed this project, is that they know that Unless we can read and study the sutras in our own language, English, we can't really bring a full and authentic, complete transmission of the Dharma into a new culture, a new language. Until the Buddha's words are translated, most of us can't read them. Until we can read them, we can't study them. Unless we can study them properly, we can't meditate them. And without meditation, there's no realization. So it all begins with the translation of the sutras. Another reason why translating the entire Tibetan Buddhist canon is very important is that the Buddha's words and the commentaries on them by the great Indian masters are an authentic map, an accurate record, of how the Buddha tread the path to enlightenment. This is the path that leads us beyond suffering to Buddhahood. Thus, the sutras themselves are like pure gold. But at this time, only about 9% of the entire Buddhist conjuring tension has been translated into English. Literally, only a tiny nugget These days, we have a waterfall of books and um, blogs and tweets constantly uh, giving us information about Buddhist topics. They're produced by anybody who has an opinion in a computer these days, including myself. But although these trendy texts may be yellow-colored, they may be sometimes even gold-plated, that's different than the actual sutras, which are pure gold. So many dharma books, but so few sutras. So many new opinions about the dharma, but so few actual study of the commentaries by the great Indian masters. Until we complete the full English translation of the Kanjana and Tanjana with the authentic map to enlightenment, the Dharma in the West could easily wander along mistaken paths that are yellow-colored, but not authentic gold. 
There's a third reason why the 84,000 Project's effort to translate the Dharma into English is so very important. That is, the great Tibetan masters who know that conjure and tenure, who were trained in Tibet, who have studied it deeply for all of their lives, are now very senior in years. Many have already passed beyond our opportunity to ask their advice and receive their assistance in translation. In addition to that, people with high levels of literacy in Tibetan, which are required for good translation, are becoming fewer and fewer every year. Due to the political changes in Tibet, most Tibetan children in China grow up speaking and reading Chinese. And those who live outside Tibet are schooled in Nepali, Hindi, Swiss, and English, but precious little Tibetan. Thus, the translation effort needs to begin immediately and continue quickly while we still have the teachers that we consult and experts who can read and deeply understand the texts. By doing this translation, Zonzar Chensei Rinpoche has said, in fact, unless we do this translation, a vast swath of Buddhist civilization and culture is likely to face annihilation. So three years ago, at a meeting of translators in India, the 84,000 project was conceived, and the international nonprofit effort to translate and share the Tibetan conjure and tenure was begun. Under the blessings and chairmanship, Venerable Tsongtsar Chensei Rinpoche and the very skillful leadership and executive director, Mrs. Jing Rui Huang, is now well, well begun. The first year was spent carefully laying the scholarly and organizational groundwork. Grants were offered to qualified teams for translation work on the country. Now, more than a hundred translators in universities and monasteries all around the world are already working on the translations of the sutras. 10% of the conjure is already under grant. That's good progress for the first three years. The first fruits, carefully reviewed and edited by the best scholars, are now posted on the 84,000 online <coughs> fully available free to the world on the internet. Copies of them are among the sutras that we'll be reading tonight. I encourage you to go to the 84,000 website. It's 84,000.co.co. Read the sutras, download them, share them, tweet them to your friends. Tell your friends that nuggets of pure gold are now available on the website. By virtue of participating in tonight's reading, we are all already part of this historic transmission of the Dharma into English in this new land. There are other ways that you can help the project too, and Deborah McLaughlin will explain more about that to us later this evening. Tonight, we're going to read several of 84,000's first translations along with some additional Pali Sutras, translated from the Pali Buddhist canon as well. We will begin with preliminary prayers. You can join us, or just listen, whichever you prefer. Following that, Kempo Kalsang will lead us in reading aloud the words of the Buddha. Each of us will read a different sutra, all at the same time, creating a beautiful, auspicious, and mixed resounding of the words of the Buddha. As you read your own sutra aloud, read in a mindful, respectful speaking voice. The person beside you will be reading a different one. All together, the sounds combine into what's known as a resounding. Start with the first sutra on the top of your packet, but skip the prefaces, the translator's introductions, and the footnotes. These are only yellow colored, they're not really gold. Then we'll all read together for about 
30 minutes. And then five minutes before the end, you'll hear a bell ring. Keep reading when you hear the bell, but at that point, jump to a place about two or three pages from the end of the text. That way, we will all finish roughly together. As you come to the end of your text, then sit quietly, and before long, one by one, we will all come to the ends of our texts. And then we can sit together in silence for a moment, rejoicing in the beautiful sound of the Buddha's words. I now turn the event over to Venerable Kemal Kalsam, who will explain the traditional significance of reading the sutras aloud in this way, and will lead us in the preliminary prayers and the actual resounding of the sutras.